murder, and two, like the entire art world is in on it. Good morning and welcome back. Um, so you know, yesterday, you saw the video, just super hot, up to 90 degrees, 75% humidity. Um, I'm in my gear, it's just hot. And so I got to my guest room and they had an air conditioner. Ha! So I cranked that thing down to 17 degrees Celsius, which is about, what, 66 degrees, somewhere in that range. And let it crank all night and I was bundled up and I slept. So I was out. So uh, I had a great night's sleep. And this morning, I'm up early. It's like eight o'clock in the morning. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna keep heading south, get to Vienna, because I've never been to Austria. And so I wanna, I wanna get to the country and see a slice of it. I'm not gonna see very much of it. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll then head east into Slovakia and go through uh, Bratislava, and then start to head kind of, we're gonna kind of hug the top part of Slovakia and then make my way to the mountains over the next few days. So that's the plan for the next few days. Uh, it looks like a beautiful day. It's gorgeous out and uh, it looks like a beautiful ride. So we are on the road early this morning. Um, it is 8.59 and uh, I got an early start today. Um, and we're in a town called Vronovic or Vronovic, not quite sure. Um, and we are gonna make our way towards Vienna right now. And so you can see we are just left the little town and we're on the road and we've told Google Maps to avoid toll roads and motorways. So it's gonna be some beautiful country like this. My guess is this, a pro this is a protest. This has been going up and down this street and they're not big fires, they're straw. And my gut tells me that this is a protest by the farmers. telling me to turn around. They're gonna be here for a while. And that truck's not going anywhere. And I'll show you some of the more of the city. See? You can see. I'm gonna try to go that way and just 
just get out of everybody's way. Get out of the firefighter's way. smack dab in the middle of Vienna and there's a restaurant here that I want to go to let's go see if we can get in getting close for lunch but not quite it's like 11 o'clock and so um, maybe we can get in let's go see so we stopped at full pension which means full pension um, and it is kind of a, a refuge for weary travelers so in the restaurant, there's a restaurant here, but above the restaurant are places to stay for the night, hence the pension. Uh, but downstairs on the first floor, and where we're at, um, it is a restaurant. The original concept was it would be staffed with omas, grand grandmas, opas, grandfathers, to let them earn a little bit of extra money in their uh, retirement. And so um, I think all the, all the food is cooked by omas and opas. And so it is cooked like your grandma made. Uh, and so I thought this was a cool concept. It is super hot and steamy. So we just got iced tea and uh, some kind of toast. Toast with a sock all day. Seems very European. <laughs> That's what I got. Chive with toast and a soft boiled day. But we're gonna enjoy this, cool down a little bit with the IC and have uh, have lunch. So this is the inside of the Val Pen uh, Vol Pension. It's kind of decorated like what you would expect your grand, your, you know, kind of your your grandparents, your grandmother's house. Very quaint. Um, and the desserts looked amazing. So we are not gonna eat them because I think I got insulted just night. <laughs> well, you're not gonna eat that. Um, I don't need any more desserts and sweets. But anyway, we got one more stop. Hopefully it's open, I think it will be. We got one more stop and then we will uh, get moving. So here's the other place I wanted to, I wanted to come um, in Austria is I wanted to come to a museum. And now you know me, I'm not a museum guy. I tend to get bored, I tend to, same thing, same thing. Anyway, this is the Museum of Art Fakes. How cool is this? So I was started, I don't know, a couple years back. Um, I started watching a couple of like documentaries and I think there's a, um, a Netflix, I think a series or a movie called Made You Look that uh, talks about art themes. And it was also highlighted in the uh, Pierce Brosnan, Rene Russo movie, uh, Thomas Crown Affair, where um, he basically steals a piece of uh, art and then uh, returns it, but it's covered with a Pissarro on top. And so um, it's super fascinating. Anyway, I want to go in here and uh, let's go. This one seems cool. So I had to laugh. So I saw the no camera, right side, and I asked, is it, is it okay if I, if it's a videotape, right? And she's like, yes, as long as it's away from the, as long as it's away from the art and the copyright. Copyright, what an entire building of fakes. And yet they're like, 
No cameras because of copyrights. How ironic is that? <laughs> this museum is super cool. So what they show you is they show you like an original, right? Original, and this is obviously a picture. The Morning on the Thin by Claude Monet. That was painted in 1897. Now, and then this forger, who is um, Elmer de Horde, he painted this one and signed it. I don't know if you guys can see it. Claude Manet. And so the forger created in the style of um, in the style of Monet, but then passed it off as an original and sold it. Here's a little bit different. So you can see the original by Klimt. Um, and then this person did um, by Johann von Emmich, basically copied it stroke by stroke, near perfect, and pass it off as an original. And so one was in the style of the, uh, of the artist and pass it off as original, and this one is the same picture. Super cool in there. I came outside to talk uh, because inside it's had this whole museum hush hush. So I couldn't talk to you, even though it's all fakes and it's just none of it's real. But it still had the that vibe going, so I couldn't talk to you. But it was really cool. And a couple things I learned. One, murder. And two, like the entire art world is in on it. There's estimates that up to 60% of the art in the world, of all the masters things, are all fakes. 60%. That's incredible. And they are selling for millions. It's big money. Um, but one of the things interesting is um, one of the one of the the artists the fakers was actually murdered because of it so um what it was is he and i'll put it down at the bottom because I, I you know me and names I'm, I'm terrible with names and all that he was quite a well-known um or he was quite a well you know very talented artist in and own in in his own right and he got, um, he got a scholarship to like, the British Art Academy, but all of his professors and all the critics were saying, eh, your stuff is not that great. So he started, uh, so he started copying the masters. Well, those copies were basically said that they were perfect and um, they could not be told apart from the originals. So he just continued on because he was angry with the art establishment he wanted to expose it all so he started he started um, kind of telling his story and he actually wrote a book and as the book was published shortly after he was found in italy dead on the sidewalk blunt force to his head so he was murdered for wanting to expose the uh the fraudulent op, uh, fraudulent art market the other thing i learned is that they're all in on it so it's estimated that upwards of 60% of all the masters around the world are fakes. And the entire industry is in on, is in on the ruse. Um, and the reason is because there's so much money to be made. So in order to have a fake, you obviously have to produce it, right? So you have to have the artist fake, fake a painting. You also have to have a gallery with enough clout to be believable that they would have such an artist's work and you would also have to have a buyer gullible enough and I say gullible enough um, that's willing to to buy the fake because usually they're, they're sold at a price that is not dirt cheap um, but not overly expensive and so you kind of know it's fake um, and then you also have the authenticators, the Sotheby's, the Christie's, um, the art houses, as well as the, the private, uh, um, the private validators, who come out and say that they're that they're real. When a when a forger or a gallery is under investigation, the art world doesn't come out and support the investigation. They all shut down, so they won't they won't allow their pieces out of their you know out of their possession to be investigated. They won't investigate the, the fraudulent artists. They won't investigate the, the galleries that sold them. Um, 
because they don't want to ex one they don't want to expose the lies because if you're a, a validator or a, a critic or a you know somebody who's authenticated a, a piece you don't want it to be known that you've authenticated a a, a, uh, a fraudulent piece of art and call into question your credentials if you're an owner of the art you don't want anybody to question it because that could reduce the value that you paid a million dollars for down to nothing um, and obviously the the fraudulent artists don't want to be investigated because they don't want to go to jail so the entire art industry isn't on the ruse how cool is that such an interesting 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 con to uh, topic what the museum did talk about is the the artist he's a chinese artist i believe that is uh the topic of the movie made you look on netflix but super super cool neat little museum worth worth the money worth the visit anyway okay no. Uh, with the lunch at the Volpension and the Museum of Art Fakes, um, we're gonna leave Vienna. Although I did stumble upon Untervasa House. No idea, but I was taking pictures of it. So I take pictures of it. I may show you. I may not. I don't even know. I feel like sheep though, because everybody else taking pictures of it, so I took pictures of it. So it might be important. I don't know. I literally think somebody, I heard just somebody walk up on the edge of the, of the uh, sidewalk and, go, and look at the house and go, wow. So it, it might be, it might be important. I don't know. Anyway, let's get out of here. to say it. Here we go. Welcome to Slovakia. We made it. Woo -woo. I'm excited. So this is country number three today. So we were in Czechia, then Austria, now Slovakia. And uh, two new ones for me. I'd never been to Austria and I've, and I've never been to Slovakia. So that's cool. And uh, we're still making our way. So we are in a spectacular little town called Strekno. And I think that's my little Airbnb. Yes, it is. Wow. Oh, where am I park? And there we go. Okay. <sighs> Tired. Let's go check in. So we got into Strekno, uh, which is a rinky dink little town. You can see kind of the mountains. Uh, right, right outside of Kalina in Slovakia. Um, and we're at this little uh, kind of pension here with a pizzeria. That's going to be for dinner tonight. So uh, as I was coming here today, right, we were on the, on the, uh, on the toll road. And I thought, you know what? It seems awfully loud my the kind of the the tires and i'm like yep they're you know they're knobbies going a little bit faster than i would normally go on with with uh you know knobby tires and that kind of thing so i was like they're kind of loud and maybe a little bit rougher but I, nothing crazy but i pulled up and look what i just saw on my tire so look at this i had knobbies literally come off my tire and the other ones are separating that one's nearly off scary 
that we were on a, a toll road doing 130 kilometers an hour and I have rubber flying off my tires. Bit unnerving. Today was such, was a good day until the very end. So <clears throat> leaving Czechia and getting into Vienna, Austria, beautiful ride, absolutely fantastic. Um, and go to Velpension. So and kind of an odd breakfast in my mind. So just pieces of bread with, I think, butter. Just absolutely covered with shallots or cut up green onions. It was an odd, odd mixture. Although the egg was nice and the iced tea was refreshing. So it was really nice. Um, it was really cute to go there. And the Museum of Fake Art. I thought it was cool. I thought it was a really neat um, idea. And I had watched some specials and I also watched the Netflix video or about it and I thought it was really cool. So need to need to understand a little bit about it. Um, and a neat little place with a pizza place downstairs. So that was all good until I looked at my front tire. We are gonna figure out what we do tomorrow. Cause I'm about 200 miles away from Bratislava and from another BMW dealership. There's a couple motorcycle shops in town about 15 miles away and maybe 10 miles away. And so we are going to make our way there tomorrow and See what we can do. So we're going to call it an A and we're going to end it here. I hope you guys liked this video and I will see you guys later. See ya.